Now, notice that to check any process, we have to determine delta s for that process and we have to check whether that is greater than or equal to integral d q by t. If yes, then the process is possible. If no, then the process is impossible. In between, if you say that if the equality holds, then the answer is yes, it is possible and it is reversible. And that means, this is possible, if it is greater than holds, then it is possible irreversible. And we know that, well, thermodynamics will say it is a possible reversible process, but as good engineers, we should realize that it is a, a reversible process is extremely difficult. So, the one would say that uh, I would not be able to, in reasonable costs or even with extreme cost, be able to execute that process. But now, we notice that this requires evaluation during or over a process. And if we study the process in detail, find out whenever the uh, heat is transferred, heat transfer takes place across the boundary, what is the temperature. The question is, how does one evaluate delta s? And the answer is simple. Take any convenient reversible process from 1 to 2 and then delta s is integral 1 to 2 d q by t for a reversible process. So, evaluate this measure d q by t or determine d q, determine t and evaluate it. But then, how do you imagine a reversible process. Rem remember that reversible process is only to be imagined. So, imagine or consider. In fact, uh, the word imagine for some reason is not used in all mathematics and others we say consider an integer or let there be an integer. It might as well be imagine an integer. Imagine a reversible process. The question is how? There are many requirements. First thing, it must be quasi-static. That means, system plus the systems with which it interacts, surrounding systems must be in states of equilibrium. Number two, there should be always, for example, uh, no dissipative work. That means, 
no one way mode of work. That means, for a fluid only expansion work. Three the heat transfer must be across zero temperature difference. So, if the system is absorbing heat from the surroundings, the temperature difference between the system and the surrounding or between system A and system B must be 0, because if it is non-zero, then heat will get transferred from a higher temperature to a lower temperature and we cannot reverse that. So, but I say 0 with a quote, because we know that if you have a 0 temperature difference, then by 0th law there will not be any heat transfer. So, we must have a negligible infinitesimal temperature difference. That is that idea we have used when we uh, uh, derived the relationship for the efficiency of a Carnot cycle. And in a similar manner as required, for example, whenever you do expansion work, pressure difference between system and the neighboring system, but must also be 0. So, there is no possibility in a reversible process for a free expansion or for sudden expansion. And if you are considering a complex system, for example, you have a system which is, uh, which has a gas as well as maybe a spring, then one work mode will be the compression and extension of the spring. That should also be quasi static and whenever you compress the spring, the force on the spring and the force of resistance by the spring must always be balanced with each other. That means, the force balanced must be perfect, imbalance must be 0 and that is also like saying temperature difference is 0, because if the imbalance is 0, you will never be able to compress the spring. So, whatever is the imbalance must be absolutely negligible imbalance. So, the reversible case is actually a limiting case, you cannot actually execute it in practice, but that does not prevent us from executing such a process, writing the first law and the state of uh, process equations and equation of state for this and evaluating this. So, we use such a process and use this to evaluate delta s. Now, let us take a uh, let us be more and more specific. Say, in the general case, delta S 1 2 is integral d q by t 1 to 2 any convenient reversible process. And then let us take a compressible system, that is a fluid system. One mode of work compression or expansion. So, 
if I want to execute a process reversibly, that means I must have only P D V work that too done quasi statically with system and surroundings in balance. And we will assume that our compressible system is at rest. So, we will assume d e is d u and henceforth we will consider all our systems essentially at rest. So, now delta s 1 2 will be integral d q by t reversible and by first law d q will be d u plus P d V, because we have already assumed d E is d U and for reversible it is required that you cannot have any component of work other than the expansion component. So, for a compressible system this will turn out to be d U plus P d V by if you take the differential form of this, this will become d s equals d u plus p d v by t and then in the differential form you will get d s equal to d u plus p d v by t, which you can write down as t d s is d u plus P d V. And this is what we call the basic property relation for a simple compressible system or for a fluid. And this is an important relation, one must not forget it. You integrate this and you will be able to of course, integrate it in this form, so that you can get the uh, value of d s. Now, from the general case of a fluid, let us take the special case of an ideal gas with constant specific heats. And how do we evaluate delta S? The basic relation would still be this. So, you will have d s is d u plus p d v by t and since we have an ideal gas with constant specific heats, d u can be written as m c v d t and p can be written down as m r t by V and substitute this and this into this and you will get T S equals M. The first term is C V D T by T. I will write it as C V D T by T. The second term, there is an M here. So, we have R T by V, but T cancels with this. So, you will have M R D V by V plus R D V. and you integrate this out. So, 
if you integrate this out from 1 to 2, this is from t 1 to t 2, this becomes from v 1 to v 2 and you will get for an ideal gas with constant specific heats delta S 1 2 is m into C v l n t 2 by t 1 plus r l n v 2 by v 1. Okay. Now, you can use the equation of state of an ideal gas to obtain this in terms of here notice we have the change in temperature uh, change in entropy and note this is for ideal gas constant C p C v, but here we have temperature ratio and volume ratio. If you want you can have it in terms of temperature ratio and pressure ratio and you can have it also in terms of pressure ratio and volume ratio. All that you are doing is, you are effectively integrating, suppose this is 1 and this is 2 and let us say that this is the P V diagram. So, isotherm for 1 will be like this, isotherm for 2 will be like this. So, here I am going along a constant volume line first and then along a constant temperature line. So, you can say maybe there is a constant temperature line involved and the constant volume line involved or you can go along a constant volume line first and sorry a con so here made a mistake. I am talking of constant temperature line and then a constant volume line. So, the constant volume line will be, I think I should show this rather shallow, otherwise I am going out of the range. This is my 2, it is my 1. First I am going along a constant volume line, so going like this and then going along the constant temperature line like this from here to here and you will get this relation. You will get other relations if you first go along the constant pressure line and then go along the constant temperature line or you can first go along a constant pressure line and then go along a constant volume line. Various choices are there, but remember whichever way you do the expression may look algebraically different, but they should all be numerically equivalent. You should be able to take use just the equation of state relating 1 and 2 and show that all three forms are equal. So, homework derive delta S 1 2 in terms of case A T 2 T 1, P 2, P 1. Here you have T 2, T 1, V 2, V 1, P 2, P 1 and B, P 2, P 1, V 2, V 1. Okay. That is recommended homework. Now, in case of water what happens? ordinary water substance. E O S 2 complex. Okay. So, we have tables. values of specific entropy are tabulated and if you plot usually when you plot the entropy usually you will plot it on the T s diagram.
and you get a curve something like this, inverted u, shapes and slopes are different, critical point at the top and a typical isobar will be horizontal in the two phase zone and it will slowly start behaving as you go to in the deep superheat, it will start behaving like an ideal gas. This is P 1, this is P 2, both are subcritical. The critical isobar will be tangent here like this, P critical, beyond that they will go like this. This is how the temperature entropy diagram of ordinary water substance looks like. And we have already seen day before yesterday uh, how the uh, diagram, enthalpy entropy diagrams look like. From a thermodynamic point of view, it is good to imagine things on the T s diagram, because P v diagram and T s diagram are important diagrams for us. Whereas, H s diagram is good only for certain type of open systems, not generally uh, for the thermodynamic analysis. Now, let us do a few small thought experiments before we go to exercises. Let us look at a process. any process and let us say that it is quasi static, so that we can plot it on the state space. And let us plot it on the P v diagram and let us also plot it on the T s diagram. do not worry about what type of process it is. Let us say that the quasi static process looks like this on the P v diagram and looks like this on the T s diagram. Now, since it is a quasi static process, the curve is properly defined and what is the area of the curve, area under the curve in the P v diagram? What does it represent? It represents the expansion work. I think all of you agree. This is a quasi static process. What is the area under the curve? A T s. Well, one thing is certain A T s is integral T d s. Question is is it q during the process or is it not q during the process? If it is not q during the process, is it greater than, less than, equal to what combination? I want you to compare this with q. I propose that this is greater than or equal to q, but I want all of you to check this out. I would like you to do also the following. Consider a fluid system. And 
let us consider a process or a small process, process element you can say, in which the property changes are d t, d p, d v, d u, because it is at rest, I do not have to worry about d e, d s, d h, etcetera, whatever you have. Let us say that the work done is d w and I am not restricting it to expansion work, it is general process. And let us say that the heat transferred is d q. And since it is a fluid system, this d w may have two components, d w will be made up of d w expansion which I can write as p d v and other Now, remember that such a process apart from the equation of state will be uh, governed by two equations. One equation is the first law. The first law says d q is d u plus d w which I can expand and write d u plus p d v plus d w other. This is first law. What will the second law say? We have d s is greater than or equal to d q by t or T d s is greater than or equal to d q or d q is less than or equal to T d s. But apart from this, because d s is a change in a property, we can use the basic property relation. basic property relation is T d s is d u plus p d v. Now, I will leave it to you to quickly combine these three and show that d w other has to be less than or equal to 0. This is the consequence. And what does this mean? That for a fluid system, this is just an illustration, but you can take other type of system, simple or complex. What you can show that we have taken a fluid system. So, it can do the two way mode of work P d v, it can also do some one way mode of work, this could be stirrer or this could be electrical. But if it does one way mode of work, that mode of work will be such that the work interaction will be negative. That means, the one way mode of work for a system will always be able to do work on the system. The system will not be able to do work by a one way mode of work on its surrounding, check that derive this. You just have to combine these two, uh, these three equations 1, 2 and 3. And this is a demonstration of the fact which we have noticed, but never really worried about it is that why is it that a mode like stirrer work, we can only do work on the system. Similarly, if we have a uh, 
electric connection to a fluid as in a geyser, we can only do work on the fluid. We cannot do the, we cannot have the fluid do work on the electrical system or we cannot have the fluid stir the stirrer for us. The reason is the laws of thermodynamics themselves. Now, a gap of 1 minute and then I will take questions from various centers. Valchan College, Sangli, over to you. Ah, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Over. Uh, sir, my question is, in which case steam can be considered as an ideal gas? Okay, it is simple. Steam, my uh, um, uh, answer to anybody who asks this question is steam is nowhere near an ideal gas. It is far from an ideal gas. So, unless you have steam at very low pressure, that means a fraction of an atmosphere, that means water vapor at pressures of something like 0.1 bar or even less than that, uh, you will not be able to come anywhere near approximating steam as an ideal gas. And that too out there. Uh, mm, it is a very crude approximation, but that approximation is used. For example, in psychrometry, where you have mixtures of air and dry air and water vapor giving you moist air, that the fraction of steam is so small, partial pressure is so small, fraction, a small fraction of an atmosphere that you can uh, do reasonably neat engineering calculations by assuming it to be an ideal gas. And there also remember that we are not much interested in the PVT relationship, we are interested in the enthalpy temperature relationship and that is more or less linear with temperature. So, we can think of an effective specific heat and go ahead with it. Over. My another question is, uh, uh, in phase rule, can you give me example of multi component system? Over to you. Uh, okay. A multi component system in a phase rule will be something like uh, water and alcohol or even in our aqua ammonia mixtures, we use ammonia and water. Those are multi component, two component systems. Okay. Even in uh, uh, psychrometry, air and vapor, water vapor is a two component system, but uh, well the separation of the two components etcetera is not of that great importance there. Whereas, I think for mechanical engineers, the nearest we come to a multi component system, where the two components are active, the concentration or the uh, fraction changes significantly is in uh, aqua ammonia refrigerators and such types. Over. Thank you, sir. Over and out. Truba Indor, any questions? Over to you. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Go ahead. Sir, my question is that in yesterday question, sir, in yesterday quiz, I, I see one question that uh, pre, mi, minus two, uh, 273 degrees, 0.16 degree centigrade, 273.16 degree centigrade is our convenience. But, sir, what I studied is it is for freezing point. So, can you explain over to you? See, uh, uh, that 273.16, I have said when I explained and again I have said on the Moodle during discussion, it comes out of convenience and that is simply because we want to make a temperature difference of 1 degree on the Kelvin scale or 1 unit on the Kelvin scale and temperature difference of 1 uh, unit or 1 degree on the Celsius scale to be the same and that too for our convenience. Over. Good afternoon, sir. It's Govind Maheshwari. So there is one more query that's regarding the latent heat of vaporization. As you have shown in the stream table, the various latent heat of vaporizations uh, in as per the pressures. Are there any empirical relations to calculate the latent heat of vaporization? Because once we can calculate the empirical relation, yeah, we can calculate the latent heat of vaporization. Definitely, we can calculate the enthalpies for the saturated stream as well as for the superheated streams. 
over and uh, there are uh, a reasonable number of empirical relationships which give you the what not just the latent heat but the whole set of properties of water you just uh, do a search on the net for properties of water and steam and you will uh, get enough approximate and more and more accurate uh, relations for various properties of water, thermodynamic as well as transport properties of water. Over. Over and out. PSG, over to you. Hello, sir. In Carnot theorem, the efficiency of the system is less than the uh, efficiency of the system if it works on reverse process. Is it applicable only for steam or all other type of liquid also? Over to you, sir. See, the Carnot theorem does not say anything about what fluids or what materials the engines work on. Carnot theorem just talks about efficiency of any reversible engine is less than or equal to efficiency of a reversible engine, provided both of them are working between the same temperature limits. So, the question of steam etcetera does not arise, the reversible machine may be made of steam, if you can make a reversible machine. The other machine may be made of steam, may be using steam, may be using air, may be using hydrogen, anything, this is applicable. It is also applicable if the uh, general machine is uh, using steam and the reversible machine is using air. So, in Carnot theorem, that is what we did when we looked at the corollary of the Carnot theorem, that the efficiency of a reversible 2 T heat engine depends only on the two temperatures and does not depend on how the engine is built or how it is made to work. The only requirement is it be a 2 T heat engine and it be a reversible engine. So, I am stopping the interaction here for the time being.